Hi guys, we're gonna go over mortgage protection and really breaking down the mortgage protection financial inventory. We're gonna go over getting to the why, the medical, the financial aspect, and exploring how to really show options and build value in the home. First off, this is a overview of what you'll be using in the home for your financial inventory. It's broken up into four sections, four different colors. Um, green goes over your objectives and figuring out the why. The blue is the finances, the, the financial aspect of this. Uh, the purple is the medical, so we can figure out what they qualify for. And then the red is gonna be the options. Now first, let's get to the why, okay? Why are you here? Three objectives that we are always gonna make sure we ex explain is that our objective here is we're gonna make sure this is something that's affordable, that you're comfortable with, that you fully understand, and most importantly, that you qualify for as well. We wanna find out why this is important to them. What would happen if they don't have this? What is their plan? Are they gonna move, rent? sell? Is this going to buy time for them to make decisions up to what is going to happen? Have they had a recent death in the family? And if so, did they have insurance? Did they not? What did that look like for the family member? What did that look like for them? And really, who is this for? Who is this going to be for? Are they family? Are they, do they have a family? Is this for a wife, for kids? Are they single? Are they more concerned with the living benefits, the disability aspect of it? Do they want to make sure that their siblings or their parents or their nieces or nephews, everybody has a why, everybody has their people. This is where you're going to get to that. Why are you here? What are they looking for? What type of help do they need? It's very, very important to make sure you got their why before you dive into anything else because we are in the business of helping families and pro problem solving. So make sure you ask enough questions so that way you can build that value and figure out why are you here. Uh, next, we're going to get into is the financial information. Now, there's a couple key important aspects here. First off here says mortgage. This is where you're going to want to find out what's their mortgage amount. Is it a 15, 20, 30 year? Did they refinance? Did they purchase? How much if they went out to sell their home tomorrow, how much is it worth? What's their mortgage payment? And then making sure to figure out what the equity, that's based on how much you owe and how much the house is worth and making sure to really, like I circle the equity. I don't care if it's 5,000, it's 200,000, whatever it is, I say the equity. I make sure they say, this is the whole reason why we buy a home in the first place is make sure that we have, we've got the equity. We wanna make sure that we protect that equity. Equity that I explained is like a bag of money in your basement. You want to make sure that when something happens to you, that the person who's that you are protecting has access to that money. And then are they going to make, are they planning to make any extra mortgage payments? Are they planning to pay the home off early? These are all key important questions to find out if they say, yeah, I would like to, you know, or no, absolutely not. I don't have any extra money or yes, I already have been. This is utilizing one building the importance of finding out how, how important it is for them to, to pay the home off early. Are they in the habit of saving money? Um, making sure to ask them, you know, when you're asking financial stuff, ballpark numbers, not getting specific, not feeling super invasive, ballpark after taxes, what do you see at home? What comes to your home every month? Ballpark, what do you have for your, um, when your retirement? Ballpark numbers, just so I know what Mary's gonna have when you, when you do die. Um, again, asking, are they gonna pay off the home early? How much money are they putting into savings in the month? Not asking, do you put money into savings? The question I ask is, how much a month are you putting into savings? And the golden question is, do you have any life insurance outside of work that you own or anything that acts like life insurance that's transferable upon your death, like a 401k, an IRA, stocks, CDs, or any significant savings that Mary can use when you die? Those key questions are going to really help so that way you can understand what this looks like for them. Also understanding who's the income, who has more income. Is it one person? Is it you know both? Do they equally depend upon each other? Do they have kids and the wife stays home or the dad stays home? What does this look like for the individual person that you're setting with? Now getting into the medical questions, this is going to be very, very important to understand what your client's going to qualify for. 
and what might be in the future for them. So that way you can adequately protect them and have some leverage as to explaining your reasoning as to why certain things would be important to them. Now, questions like, have you ever? Have you ever been diagnosed? Have you ever had this? Have you ever tested positive? Do you have a history for yourself of this? Do you have a history for yourself of this? I also like to ask family history. What, what kind of health does your mom have or your dad or your grandpa or your aunt or your uncle? I want to know what the family history is like. Also build chart, making sure you know what their height and weight is and if they are a smoker or not. Um, questions like medications. It's what they look at for simplified issue is medications in the last five years. So if somebody has been taking, say, a heavily uh, heavy antidepressant, perhaps they've had three different ones that they've changed. So when someone tells me, oh, I'm on a lisinopril, I'll say, have they changed your prescription around a bunch or where did they prescribe that one to you and that worked really well? Because I wanna know what has their doctor prescribed them over the last five years. Also, get details. When someone tells you that they're, they're being prescribed metropolol, why are you being prescribed metropolol? When did they prescribe it to you? And how long have you been taking, how often are you taking it? Uh, things like that to understand the importance of this. Someone tells you they're taking something for sleep. Well, what is it? Okay. Also making sure that you have a, a something, an app on your phone where you can look up the medication to see what the common uses are. That's what the insurance carriers look at. So if someone says that they take something for sleep, but it's also an antipsychotic, they're going to look on the, the, the level of being an antipsychotic. Okay. So again, these are the typical medical questions. Have you ever had a heart attack, stroke, TIA, which is basically a mini stroke, cancer stints, diabetes. You have you ever had any complications to your diabetes like neuropathy? Do you have high blood pressure, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma or COPD, thyroid issues, anxiety, depression, any mood disorders, any kidney or liver disease? I also like to ask, which is very important, do you have any history of any DUIs, any felonies? Do you have your driver's license? Those key questions, any history of any drug or alcohol abuse, things like that are gonna be very, very important to know so that way you can find a carrier that they're gonna qualify for. Now, options. Now, there's gonna be another video after this exploring all the options for different types of clients, but to give you a base overview of how to show options, we're gonna go over a scenario. Okay, so our scenario here, we have a 42-year-old male. He's a non-smoker. He owes 300,000 on his home. He is a sole income earner. He's got a wife. He's got three kids. Um, his income is $7,200 a month. He's got a $1,600 mortgage payment. He's got minimal debt. He's got one car payment. Again, three children. He has $100,000 of equity in the home. The wife wants to stay in the home if he dies. His father died of colon cancer at the age of 62. That right there is our scenario. So one option that I would show him would be based off of his budget, uh, making sure that I that I make this affordable to them. Again, he owes 300,000. So what I would show as one option would be a $200,000 HMS 150, which is CBO. This is through AmeriCo. This gives him 200,000 of life coverage. If he was to have an accident, it would cover 300,000. This has the living benefits, which are critical chronic terminal illness. This offers return of premium. This protects 100,000 of equity that he, they have in the home. And we're gonna put in for 25 years. This is a 189 a month. And at the end of that gives him 56,700 back at the end of the month to pay his home off five years early. So the reason that I would put, offer this as an option would be that if he was to die, say, from an accident here within the next 10 years, that's when he's going to owe the most on his home. So that would be covering the full mortgage. Now, what I looked at was budget. I wanted to make sure that I still showed him something that was affordable, but still showed the value of protecting his family, covering him 200000 for life, it gives him 300,000 for accidental. It gives him access up to the 200,000 for living benefits, critical chronic terminal illness, because I know that his dad had passed away from colon cancer at the age of 62, which is 20 years from now for him. 
We gave him return of premium because they like to save money. They do want to pay their home off early because they're planning on staying in the home. The wife already had mentioned that she wants to stay in the house. So protecting the equity in 25 years, they'll be able to pay off the home. They're going to be paying $189 a month. Again, if you notice, I didn't put cents in there. I don't put change in when I show numbers. And at the end of it, the $56,700 back at the end will pay the home off five years early. What you can do is pull up a, a bank amortization mortgage calculator and show in five years how much they're going to owe on the home and how much they're going to be getting back and show the interest that they've saved over the last five years. Again, what I would also do is show them a full mortgage and maybe a little bit lower. I always like to show options, but to not confuse your clients because confused people do nothing and making sure that you've got an adequate ex explanation of exactly what we were putting in place. I'm going to write the cost smaller, the benefits bigger. I'm going to make sure that I give concise description, explanation of what this is going to do for them. The money back I describe as like a glorified savings account. This is money that's going to come back to you. So for, for Bob, what I would say is, Bob, we're protecting you for life. We're protecting you with accident. If you died in an accident, you're most likely going to be younger when you owe more on your home. As you make your mortgage payments, your home is going to be paid off more and more. It gives you the living benefit. So that way, if you did get diagnosed with that colon cancer the way your dad did, you're going to have protection. And at the end of it, if nothing happens to you, which is what we want, then all your money is going to come back to you at the end, which is actually like a glorified savings account. So now you can pay your home five years off early and make sure that for the future, your wife will be able to stay in the home. Do you see how that makes financial sense? Now, again, this is one scenario uh, where we'll have some other videos with different scenarios, learning how to show options to multiple different types of clients. But this is the key understanding, again, of how mortgage protection works with your financial inventory sheet. Make sure to use this. Utilize the financial inventory sheet in every appointment. Again, we want to make sure we highlight the equity, the why. We want to make sure we know what it looks like when the husband doesn't come home. What financially is that going to look like for the wife or vice versa? Getting the medical information. That way we can adequately figure out what they qualify for and knowing how to clearly show the options and describe what the value it will be for their client. Again, when value exceeds price, that's when people will put policies in place. Just know that you're advocating for your clients, you're educating them, and you're making sure that you leave them in a better financial situation than when you left them.